we're going to use our iPads. So this is for um, schools that have one-to-one -one iPads, um, like ours does. So first, students need to download Google Maps from the uh, App Store. And then once you have Google Maps downloaded, um, you will accept the terms and conditions. And then um, if you're not already signed into Google, you'll need to go ahead and you can say continue or you can skip. You don't have to be signed into Google. It would be up to the teacher to decide if you want to use your current location or not. Uh, for our school, that's okay to use current location, uh, but not to use contacts. So if it asks you if you can use, if Google can use your contacts, please say no. So yes for location and no for contacts. All right, then we're going to come up with some place that we're going to fly over because this is all about um, uh, inspired from Tar Beach. So we can do a famous landmark or we can do some place uh, close by. So if you wanted to do like the local ice cream shop, you could do that. Or if you want to do some place famous, you could do that. So see, it says contacts, and I'm going to say no. So I'm going to type in Big Ben. And it comes up with comes up with some things like Big Ben National Park, Texas. No, I'm talking about the big giant clock in London. So you might have to look down uh, your list or type in more information, like type in London. So for example, if you're doing the Eiffel Tower, you might have to put in the Eiffel Tower in Paris. So right there is my second option, Big Ben, London, United Kingdom. Okay, that is what I want. And it flies to the map of it. So it says Big Ben, it's got some pictures. When we scroll down, you can see that Google's collected 1,697 photos as of today. Uh, and then there's also Street View. So you might have photos, you might have Street View, and you might not have photos. Also, in some countries, uh, some countries do not allow Google to go around and make Street View. So uh, you might not have Street View available, in which case you would have to use from photos. Now, if we hit Street View right from where we are, let's see what happens. All right, there it is, right in front of us. And what's cool about this is we can scroll up and we can look at it. Now, our goal is to get a good picture as if we were standing on the street looking at our famous landmark. The problem with this is that this is not a really good picture of Big Ben. It's really close, but it's not a great picture. So for big things like Big Ben, like the Statue of Liberty, like the Eiffel Tower, you're going to want to back up. And there's two ways to do that. One, you can start you know, driving down the street by pushing these arrows and scooching over and kind of look back as you go. All right, now I'm getting more of a perspective of Big Ben there. And then what you would do is you would take a picture and with the iPad you take a picture by clicking your power button and your home button at the same time. And that just took a picture. Our other option is to go back to the map and back way up by going to uh, a street nearby. So I'm actually gonna stand on this bridge and see what it looks like when I look back at Big Ben. So I'm gonna just tap there right there until I get my little red point there. Now that I've got my little red marker, street marker there, then I'm going to go to street view. And there's a much fuller picture of Parliament and of Big Ben. Now that's a full picture but it's really far away so I also want to zoom in and you do that by unpinching. You can zoom in and I want a little bit more sky there, that's a great picture right there. And then again, you take a picture in your screen. Uh, you just do a screenshot and it will go to your camera roll. Now what we're going to do is we're not gonna stay in maps. Instead, we're gonna to go to our camera roll. So find your photos. I just like to do the swipe down and find my photos. And I go to my camera roll. And there is my picture that I like. Okay, so now that we have our picture uh, that we want, what we're going to do is, um, depending on the iPad you have, if you've got a little border on your iPad, then you're going to stick two little pieces of tape on the border. If you don't, then um, just stick two little pieces of tape like in the sky and the street, not on the lines that you're necessarily going to trace. 
And that's not going to really hurt your iPad, but it is going to hold your paper in place. Because then you're going to put your paper so that it's, the image is inside the border and it's taped down. So it's going to tape down. Now see how um, my hand still is manipulating the iPad through that paper? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are in photos and that we are on the image that we want. So here's my image of Big Ben. See, there it is. That I've taped it so that it's inside my border. And we want to make sure that we don't move it at all. So we're going to have this towel here and we're going to lay the towel where our hand rests or you can even wrap the towel kind of around yourself if you want to, if that helps. So the towel keeps, you can't get your finger through the towel um, onto the iPad. So that is how we're going to keep everything stable. So now your iPad has become this light table, which is really cool. So then we're just going to trace this silhouette here that we have of uh, your famous place. And see how that uh, automatically creates this perspective line there? That this is all going off into the distance here. And I'm gonna go ahead and trace that there are, uh oh, my hand got in the way. I let it touch. There we go. But see, when I got back to my picture, it popped up exactly in the same place because I have it taped down to my iPad. And I'm going to trace that this has these really cool pillars here in the bridge and the bank of the river, which is very important, and maybe some of the street lines here. All right, then when you're done tracing that, what you do is you take it off and take the tape off the back. And this is just masking tape or you could use painter's tape, which is even um, easier to take off. It does less damage. You can see there is my silhouette drawing of Big Ben. Then I can go back through here. I can look at it and I can add some of the details like Right there, it didn't show up that this is the line where it goes from one side of the building to the other side. So I can look at this and I can be like, okay, so that's the line, and then all of those lines are going this way, and all of those lines are going this way. And that also helps with that perspective. And I'm not gonna spend the time that it would take, for this project anyway, drawing every single one of those windows. But I am, of course, going to draw the clock. And I can make it say any clock I want to. So I'm gonna make it say three o'clock, which is when we get out of school. And I see here that that's divided there. And I'll have to make a note that that is uh, a different color. All right. And so that's about the amount of detail that you need. And then this is trees here. So I'm just gonna have this go off into some trees. And that's how we can trace our famous landmark from Google Maps onto a piece of paper using our iPads as a light board. So cool. I'm gonna keep using this image though for coloring in. Because now we're gonna color in with colored pencils. Color in with colored pencils though we are going to need to draw ourselves flying over our, land, our landmark. So we're going to do this, uh, there's two methods. You can do the stick figure method or you can do the um, 
shape method and we're going to use the shape method for this. Now you can make yourself a little bit bigger because that would just show that you are closer, like you're right over the, you're, you're a little closer than right over it. The smaller you draw yourself, the further back you are. So I'm going to draw my little head here. And if it's easier for you to turn the paper so that you're not laying sideways, then when the paper's turned, it will look like you're flying. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I do my rectangle um, neck and a rectangle for my body. And I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna have my legs kind of bent a little bit, but they're still going to be like rectangles. Maybe I want that one. Actually, I think I want that straight. And draw lightly because we're going to be using colored pencils. And if you push down really hard, it's hard for the colored pencil to cover over your erase marks because it actually pushes into the paper. And kind of these rectangle feet here. And this one's going to overlap the other one there. And then my hands flying up. Bent. <laughs> or straight. Either way. Big rectangles. And we're just going to use uh, fists. We're flying with fists so that we can just use circle hands there at the end. Very simple way to draw people, especially when we haven't practiced drawing people much. And of course, the more you practice drawing people, the better you get. Add the nose and the mouth there, and then I'll color in the hair with my color pencil. So there's a picture of a person drawing and coloring in um, the shirt and the pants, the shoes, the face will help uh, tell who this is and that it is you. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to color it in with colored pencil. What I've discovered is if you have a uh, piece of felt or a piece of fabric uh, under your paper when you're coloring with colored pencils, it makes it a lot more vibrant and uh, you don't pick up the texture of the table. So we're gonna get a piece of uh, fabric. Once you're done drawing, it's time for you to glue on the quilted pattern for the border, uh, just like Faith Wrinkled would do. Now, I've got all of these um, two inch fabric squares that um, an upholstery shop donated a bunch of their uh, fabric samples, so um, I was able to cut these up. <clears throat> now, if you would like to, you can do yours as a pattern, but make sure you lay it out to make sure you've got enough for a pattern. Of course, with a pattern, you could do a AB, AB pattern or an ABC pattern, or you could do it completely randomly if you want to. So I think I'm gonna have mine be random. So I'm not going to have a pattern, but you certainly could if you wanted to. When we um, glue these on, we wanna make sure we really get them glued down, otherwise they will fall off in the hallway. So we're gonna use liquid glue and we're gonna do three lines of glue on the border here, like that. One for, the, one for the edge, one for the middle, and one for the other edge. And then we can just start gluing on our two inch squares. <laughs> 